Okay, so there was this great question on Piazza in the class um, with regard to how one could go about controlling the turtle using uh, using keystrokes and so forth. Um, there was an answer provided by someone else, but I do uh, I do kind of want to talk about this a little bit more, show a couple of different ideas and so forth. Um, so over here in uh, here is the the Java doc for all of all of Java. Um, and uh, and the one package we're going to take a look at is uh, is the event package Java Auth event. Okay, so this is the package that uh, that has um, has stuff for you to be able to handle these various kinds of events. Um, the first thing to notice is that uh, is that at the beginning of the package, in fact, you may have noticed this if you've been looking at the at the Java docs, the top of the package listing are interfaces, right? Now we talked about this in our last video, um, what interfaces are and kind of how they can be used. Um, and it turns out again, if you're, uh, if you're going to be dealing with, uh, with events in, um, in Java, in Java GUI programming, you're going to have to deal with interfaces. Okay. Luckily it's not really too hard. Um, so the first one we're going to look at is, uh, is this one here, key listener, right? So you notice it says it's the listener interface for receiving keyboard events, keystrokes, etc. Right. And so then we can go ahead and take a look. Here's, uh, here's the, uh, the various, uh, here's the documentation, uh, for the, uh, for each of the three methods that are required. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just real simply, I'm going to uh, I'm going to actually create a sort of little test bed here. Now, one of the things that I do want to point out, I have changed the support classes a little bit from what they used to be before. Um, so before we had animated turtle and end world, um, and as I realized when I was developing the code for this, I didn't really need uh, the only functionality that I wanted for end world was uh, was basically uh, the fact that it closes. Uh, I'm sorry that when we close the window, it automatically shuts down the program. Um, I didn't actually need the slider for uh, for all this and in fact that kind of got in the way of things um so what i did is i sort of factored this stuff out so essentially we have slider end world and we have end world um and uh, so here i'm just going to go ahead and use um and use end world itself okay and of course we'll uh, do our alt enter to import the class um, so that's imported um and actually i'm sorry i don't want that what am i thinking yes okay there we are. Um, but we do want to use it down here. So we'll create an end world, call it W, and it's a new end world, like so. Okay, of course, uh, then when we go to, head, go to run this, we should see the, uh, the world itself pop up. Uh, let's see, yep, there it is. And um, notice, the, notice the stop. So if we close this, we do see yes, uh, that actually closes the program. Okay, so let's talk about dealing with um, with key events. Ultimately, what we're going to want is we're going to call the getFrame method of endWorld, which returns something called a JFrame. A JFrame is uh, is Java's version of a window of what we know as a window on the screen. So it has a title bar, it has the little widgets, all those kinds of things. Um, and on there, we're going to call the add key listener method. Okay, so add key listener, then, you know, again, we can kind of come over here to take a look. So the JFrame class that lives over in, in javax.swing, right, there it is. And the JFrame class, uh, let's see, there it is. Okay, so here is the JFrame class. Um, and so if we take a look at for add key listener you'll notice this is actually a method it inherits but there it is there's add key listener and it takes as a parameter lo and lo and behold a key listener basically any class that implements that particular method uh, or those particular methods that particular interface okay so to be able to use uh to use the key listener what we're going to need to do is uh is create a class that implements that interface. Okay, so let's start real simple with just creating a brand new class. I want it in the same package here, so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, new class, and we'll call it Turtle Listener, like so. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm happen to be using revision control, which is why I got that uh, that question. In your case, you most likely won't see that. All right, so we changed that. So here's our turtle listener class. Now, as we see, 
um, basically we need three uh, we need three methods these three methods implemented key type that takes a key event key press that takes a key event and key release that also takes a key event okay so um, recall from your reading about interfaces and and the past video it's not enough to simply have those particular methods what is critical is that you in fact declare that your class implements the particular interface so i will say this class implements key listener okay and you notice it did put in the import so that doesn't seem to be the error that we're getting let's see what the error actually is right uh, so it says class turtle listener must either be declared abstract or implement abstract method key pressed right turns out there's actually as we know three methods that have to be implemented so i'm going to hit alt enter and i'm going to go ahead and select the option for implement the methods okay and this is a really easy way you'll see it figures out um, what those three methods are and uh, we can click OK and yeah, there they are, right? So there we have uh, empty shells for uh, for each of the methods and I'll just put in something like n key typed and end key pressed and finally end key released, okay? So the next thing I want to do is um, is let's actually put in some code so we can see uh, if this if, if each if and when each of the uh, the methods are running so we'll say system out println um, and we'll say key typed and I'll print uh, the particular character itself so get the keys character right so uh, that's key typed we'll do similarly for uh, when the key is pressed And finally, for the key being released. So there are the three methods. Each one of them are implemented to simply output to the screen, hey, uh, the key has been the key has been pressed. Okay, so what have we done here in terms of uh, in terms of the UML? Well, basically, here's what we have. Um, so I have a few things. One, I want to kind of you know talk a little bit more about some additional uh, some additional uh, of the of the relationships between classes, right? So we've already talked about uh, this one here, right? The is a relationship that is inheritance, right? So uh, animated turtle is the subclass of turtle itself, right? And we read that as animal tur animated turtle is a turtle. Right. This relationship here is kind of a different one. This says uh, that main uses the following thing. So it uses end world, it uses, well actually right now it doesn't actually use either of these. Uh, so I could actually delete that. We're gonna use it in a minute, we'll see. Um, so what this relationship basically is, is it is not modeled by an instance variable. It's very important for users. It's also known as the dependency relationship. Basically what it says is for main to work, we have to have end world and animated turtle, right? Um, and because we're actually using those in the code. So, um, well, right now we're not, again, we're not using the turtle, but we are in fact using end world, right? If we want to put a turtle on there, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So that our diagram is in fact correct. Uh, yeah, maybe we can get the right class here. Okay. So now my main class uses both end world and animated turtle. Okay. I know that it's uses because it's not an instance. Either of these are not instance variables. In fact, this class has no instance variables. Um, so right there, it tells me that um, it's not going to be one of the ones that that uh, uses instance variables. Those are has a and uh, knows a. Okay, so it's neither of those. Um, notice we don't have an a um, an extends. Yes, I want that. Uh, we don't have an extends uh, something here, so we're not dealing with the is a relationship that is inher that is inheritance. And similarly, we don't have an implements here, so that means that we are not we are not using interfaces either, okay? Uh, so we're not using the acts as or realization relationship, okay? So 
basically that leads us down to uh, to sort of the weakest relationship that is just the uses. So we see that in main itself, it actually makes use of those. Alternatively, if you happen to be just using it as a parameter, that similarly would be uh, would be uses. Okay, we want to make sure to change that. There we go. Um, so that's the exact. That's how uh, how uses itself uh, basically looks. Okay, now. Um, We've talked about ISO, you've seen, you've done reading on that and all of that. Let's take a look at, um, once again, over here. So here we're implementing an interface. So that's this relationship uh, right here. This is the acts as, right? So we can do that. Uh, let's see, I'll just kind of move that over. And uh, there it is, right? So turtle listener acts as a key listener. That's what that code is doing right now. Um, so let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Let me go ahead and run it and see what happens. So I run it and I'm banging away on the keyboard and nothing is happen happening. Why? Well, because we've created just because we've created a class and called it a listener and even though we've implemented the uh, key listener interface, notice nowhere in main have we made use of that class. Okay, so just like other classes, there's nothing special about this. Um, we haven't created an instance of that class, so of course it's uh, it's not going to uh, it's not going to work, and nothing's going to happen with it. All right, all right, let's create one. So I can say uh, turtle listener equals boy, that's a long variable. Let's just call it listener. A new turtle listener. Okay. So we do that, we've created our listener, and um, again, let's try running this, see, see what we can get. Right, so looking at this, um, yeah, we have, our, uh, we have our world, we have our turtle. Um, again, banging on the keyboard is not doing anything, okay? Now, here we did in fact create a turtle listener, so that object exists. The problem is, we still need to hook the turtle listener up to the component that we want to listen for keystrokes on. In other words, we need to hook the turtle listener up to the frame that is used by the end world. Okay, and that's where this call comes in. So I can say, get the frame, and then I'm saying, add a key listener, and that's the key listener that we're adding. Okay, so then when we do that, uh, let's see, we can go ahead and run, and um, notice there's uh, there's some pressings of the uh, of the key D. Uh, I can do some S's, um, etc. Let me just show you. Let me just hold down something like P. Okay. Now, what I want to show you here is what's basically happening. Um, let's see. Go to the top right. So notice we get a key pressed. Um, a key pressed event, we get a key typed event and a key pressed event. So all of those things, um, all three of those methods are, 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 oh, I'm sorry, we're not having key release just yet. So we have press typed um, going like crazy together. And then finally we get down to when I release the P key and we see that there. Okay, now um, it's a little bit different with control characters. <coughs> So for instance, if I hit the right arrow key, um, whoops, actually, and I do this here. Okay, so notice I'm getting a bunch of key pressed while I'm holding it down. Um, and then finally we got a key released. Um, in fact, it didn't even print uh, a, a key typed. Um, so key typed itself didn't, uh, didn't actually get called. Okay, so basically, in terms of uh, in terms of of how these things work conceptually, um, especially with control characters um, that aren't printable, what you basically are going to see is uh, is key pressed is when you basically just push down uh, the key. And if you hold it down, you're going to get multiple key pressed events firing. Released is when you let go, and key typed basically is a a sort of quick sequence of pressed and released. Okay, as we see with uh, with these with uh, printable characters, it works a little bit differently. Pressed and typed basically are both firing at the uh, at the same time. Okay, but again, so just be aware of that. All right, so now let's do something useful with uh, with this stuff, right? So I'm going to put it. Uh, let's see. I'm actually going to put it on um, on pressed. So I'm going to say if it's the case that the key character is a well, then I want to turn the turtle left. Okay. So which turtle do I want to turn? 
uh, that do I want to turn left? Well, when I run it, basically that one, right? That turtle right there is the turtle that I want to uh, that I want to turn left. Now, the reason that I take the time to show that is notice I don't have access to the turtle um, inside Turtle Listener, right? If we go back to main, the main class itself, um, this is a the turtle is a local variable in the static main method. Okay, now. There's a couple of options for getting this. One, I could make uh, the turtle an instance variable of the main class, and then I could have some way, an accessor to allow users to access that. The problem is that main itself is a static method. It has to be by Java law. And so that means that I'm gonna have to create a class, uh, an, an object of main and kind of do additional things and so forth. Um, and realistically, for what we're going to do here, that is, I'm, there's only going to be one turtle that I'm ever going to control. I don't really need uh, the the benefit of going to the going to the object each time and saying, "Hey, give me the current turtle." There's only going to be one turtle. So instead, what we can do is we can basically pass the turtle along to the turtle listener, right? So we'll do something like this. So I'll say private turtle is underscore turtle. And then I would create my turtle listener constructor that takes a turtle as a parameter. And so all we're going to do is store the turtle that we are passed um, in the instance variable underscore turtle. Okay, so now we actually have access to the, uh, to the turtle. Okay, so what did we do there um, in terms of the diagram? Well, we basically did this, right? So we see that we added uh, something called um, underscore turtle, and uh, that is uh, that is as we saw, it is a turtle. Okay, we also added a public constructor, called turtle listener, and that, um, and that, as we saw, takes a turtle. Sorry. Well, yes. Like so. And this is a constructor. Okay. So there's that. Save that. Um, just for clarity, I think I'm actually going to, I'm going to modify the name of this class. Um, so instead of uh, calling it turtle listener, it's actually not listening for a turtle or um, etc. I'm going to call this, uh, here we'll do um, rename, and I'll call it uh, turtle key listener. That's a little better. Um, yep, that should be fine. Okay, we got, uh, it didn't actually do it, sorry. Um, refactor, rename. And, oh, there it is, do refactor. All right, okay, so we did our refactoring. It actually renamed the file, renames that. Of course, over in our diagram, I probably want to uh, reflect that change as well. So we'll put a key there and a key here. It's a little clearer. Okay, so turtle key listener acts as a key listener. Right, and it's going to control. Um, it is going to interact with uh, with a turtle object. Now, what is that relationship? Well, this you'll notice is using an instance variable. Okay, so the options for that are has a or knows a. Here's the difference: in the has a relationship, you are dealing with a whole to part type of relationship, right? So think of something like the human body, right? The human body has a torso, it has a head, right? Um, those generally come into existence at the same time, right? If, um, when, you, uh, when you lose your head, the, you cease to exist, right? So um, again, the lifetime of the things tends to be the same, and, uh, and so you have this responsibility for creation of that um, in the in the particular context so for instance here notice we aren't creating the turtle 
right? Someone is passing the turtle into us saying, hey, here's the turtle that you need to know that you uh, that you need to be able to uh, to make use of later. In fact, I almost gave it away there, right? Here's the turtle that you need to know of, right? It is the nose uh, relationship. Okay, so somebody else created the turtle. They passed in the turtle object and we're just storing a reference to that so that we can make use of that, right? What does that look like here? Well, it's easy. Uh, here is uh, the nose uh, relation. Um, customarily you'll see these things kind of drawn off the side oftentimes where the uh, where the uh, corresponding instance variable is going to be and um, you'll oftentimes see uh, see something like that let's see if I can um, kind of make this a little more aesthetically appealing there we go something like that okay so here uh, what we have notice a solid line and we have an open arrowhead that is the nose uh, relationship. So turtle key listener knows a turtle. Right there it is. Okay, now that we understand that, let's go back over here. So now we can do our turtle and we'll say turn um, some number of degrees. Let's make it small. We'll do something like three. Now, you know, generally speaking, um, special and, and also remember that we probably want this negative because <coughs> uh, to turn to the left is um, is takes a negative degree for turn. Otherwise, uh, the turn is uh, is clockwise. Um, so to the uh, to the right. <coughs> OK, so now that we have that, um, a couple of things. One is we have sort of coded in here what's referred to as a magic number, right? It's a, it's a literal number just hard-coded into the program. And the point behind that, it's difficult to maintain, right? So suppose later on I decide, you know what? I actually want the amount of degrees to be turned to be five degrees rather than three degrees. Then in here, I'm going to have to search for every occurrence of three and ask the question, well, is this a turning degree? Is this a non-turning degree, et cetera? it gets kind of difficult, right? So how do we deal with that? Pretty simple. We create a named constant, right? So private static final int, and let's call it turn degrees, and we'll set that equal to three, okay? Um, I could have made it public given that it's final, and that given that it's final, um, but realistically, I have no need for the number of degrees that it's turning uh, to be known outside this class, so I'm not even going to expose it. I'll just leave it as private. Um, coming down to here, then we can say, yeah, we actually want to, uh, to use that constant. All right? Similarly, I'll do uh, else if and oops. And we'll say D. And put in the comment, turn the turtle right. Okay, and again, turtle, turn, and this time, turn degrees. Okay. It is possible that the user is going to hold down both an A and a D. Uh, realistically, um, we're just go we really only want to handle one or the other of those. Okay, so, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll do that uh, in that particular fashion. Um, all right, the other thing I'll do, let me comment out these. I don't really need uh, the, the print statements um, happening in those cases. Okay, and let me go ahead and run this. Um, ah, yes, right, so notice. Recall that Java gives us what is called the default constructor for a class. That is, if we don't provide a constructor, then we get a constructor that takes no parameters and basically does nothing. Um, but once we create or add our own constructor, we lose the default constructor, right? So now the only way to create a turtle key listener is by providing a turtle. And um, so we can pass the turtle along. Okay, so there's our turtle, and now holding down A, holding down D, we see, yes, the turtle is in fact uh, is in fact making his turns. Now, it's actually a little slow, and that's because I'm actually using an animated turtle, realistically. Um, and so remember, that has a delay built into it. So I don't even really want the animated turtle. I want the, uh, the plain old turtle, the regular turtle. So we'll go ahead and import that. And uh, if I rerun, rerun this you'll see it's much smoother. Okay. 
Now, before I make that change permanently, here's what I want to point out. So, here I'm saying that T is an animated turtle. Here, notice, I've said that the constructor of turtle key listener requires not an animated turtle, but a turtle. Like, why is that working? It works because of this, right? Animated turtle is a turtle, which means anywhere we expect an animated turtle, I'm sorry, anywhere we expect a turtle, we can provide an animated turtle, right? That's the polymorphism. Okay, so that is why, um, that is why even though here we are saying we need a turtle, passing along an animated turtle is just fine as far as the, the turtle key listener is, is concerned, right? A sort of more real life example, suppose I said for homework, bring in a bird. Okay, so you could bring in um, an African gray parrot, you could bring in a roseate spoonbill, you could bring in a flamingo, etc., etc., right? All of those things are kinds of birds, okay? So... Same type of thing here. Okay, now that we have that, uh, let's go ahead and, um, and just comment out our little debugging code here. And again, verify that, yes, this is in fact uh, working. Again, this is the jerky version because really we want to use turtle. So I'll do that. Um, yes, you're right. Let me go ahead and do my import. And now run that again. Hitting A. I'm sorry, hitting A, hitting B. Right, and you can see that, yes, it does in fact work. Okay, so we're going to stop here. And in my next video, we'll pick up right where this one left off. And I will show you how you can uh, how you can do this in another manner um, and we'll look at a couple of other things as well